Well, good morning. I am currently being driven by Chris Bryant Mansell through the Cotswolds. Um, okay. <laughs> what was I saying? We're driving through the Cotswolds, we're off to the Cotswolds Distillery. I've heard they're making rum. So we're gonna go down, find out what they're up to, and um, see if we can uh, make friends. Hopefully it'll be nice because Sean, uh, that works with me, the head distiller, he actually used to be the head brewer at the Cotswolds Distillery. So hopefully we um, can get down there and uh, see some of Sean's old friends as well. We have just arrived and the car park is packed. And then there's Sean, look at Sean. He's having such a good time. <laughs> Hi Sean. Hello, feels very strange. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to be home. I realize I haven't actually introduced Chris yet. Chris Bryant Mansell, you're looking at head of sales or sales director. Hi everyone. <laughs> I'm very excited. First distillation, Alex and me charged the still. He put the botanicals in, pushed it in with a screwdriver, and the screwdriver went straight in the bottom of the still. So we had to open the door and fish out the uh, <laughs> the screwdriver. Terrible. This was their first gin still. This is an Arnold Holstein still made over in Germany. Obviously a hybrid still. We got a pot here and a column attached to it. And this is the condensing arm here. Behind us, they've got some beautiful Forsyth stills. This is where they're making their whiskey. They've got their wash still here, which is about two and a half thousand litre capacity. Over on the other side, they've got their spirit still, and that's about 1,500 litre capacity. Very classic Forsyth design. Absolutely beautiful. You can see the different neck shapes on them. So the spirit still's got that bulge in it and that creates a high level of reflux, meaning that only the lightest alcohols are making it through. Beautiful, and I can see that the line arms themselves have actually got a bit of a return on them, so they're actually pointing down. Also very classic, helping to create uh, a lot more esterification and slightly more floral nature to their whiskey. These are their fermentation tanks that they're fermenting in. These are about two and a half thousand liters. And then that's their mash tun at the end where they're extracting all of the starches and the sugars out of the uh, grains, the barley. And then they just got another still here. They call this one Dolly. And this is one where they've been able to scale up their gin because their gin was so successful, they needed to get more production on the go. Again, same design, just a larger version. About two times the size of, of the other gin still they've got. Sean's got another funny story. Back in the day, we used to use half ton sacks and we winched up the half ton sack across to into the mill and to allow it to feed in you had to cut the end off now twice it didn't happen to me it happened to me cut the end off the bag and the bag would just empty itself straight over the top of your head Nick stood in half a ton of grain it's amazing brilliant so obviously this is where they are milling their own barley making sure it's at the right coarseness for them to extract the amount of sugars that they need. The lady's just pointing out that in that room over there, that's where they're scaling up their whiskey production. They've replicated their whiskey stills from, from in here, and they've just scaled it right up. So they've got 10,000 liter wash still, nine, I think it is, fermenters, and a beautiful wash back in there. They're all 10,000 liters. And then they've got two hot liquor tanks, and their spirit still is about 7,000, just over 7,000 liters. So it's gonna be absolutely incredible incredible volumes coming out of this distillery. It will certainly make it the largest English whiskey producer by a long shot at the moment. Watch this space. So we just walked into the barrel store and I can smell all these incredible vanilla. There's a honeycomb and a caramel note and there's this raisin, you know, it's delicious. We're trying to listen to this wonderful lady giving us this wonderful tour and Sean keeps interrupting, telling us what he did, including make, distilling the first ever Calvados. And behind us here, we've got a whole host of barrels with white labels on that he was responsible for. But looking around here, this is a fantastic barrel store. This is just like a holding space before they move on to another barrel store. So the majority of the casks in there are their single malt, but they've got rye whiskey aging. They've got a whole variety of different casks, the majority of which are sort of two different styles. They've got ex-bourbons, and then they've got STRs that were former red wine casks, shaved, toasted, recharred, red wine casks from American oak. And I believe their whiskey is a blend of 70% STR and 30% ex-bourbon. I'm whispering because the lovely lady's still talking and doing the tour, showing the bottling line through this window. We found the shop, the Madeira cask. Just sat there, we can pour straight out of it. We'll be coming back to the shop. Oh, look at this. Lovely little tasting room. In my hand, I have single malt whiskey that's been aging in a Madeira cask 
for seven years and it is so soft on the palate, it's very buttery, it almost doesn't add up, there's something so gentle about it. I was expecting something much more of a kick to the face, like quite heavy Madeira nose, but as soon as you go into it and taste it, it's really delicate, it's a beautiful little thing, they don't sell it, they've got it, they've got a barrel in the shop and you pour straight from the barrel into your bottle. We've also tasted their single malt whiskey, we tasted their dry gin, the signature one, we tasted a 1616 which is a take on an old style of gin aged in barrels. We tasted uh, a rum cask finished whiskey, two different Amaros that they do. They've also got cream liqueur, they've got vermouth, they've got a whole range of different gins and a whole load more finishes on their whiskies as well. The list is huge, super impressive liquid, very soft, highly, highly recommend. So I've just sat outside the uh, distillery shop and I get time to reflect on the scale and the awesomeness of this operation. So where they're making the whiskey, where I showed you the stills, they are converting that into rum production because they've also sensed that there's an ever-growing market that need to be indulged with uh, high quality rum so it's so exciting they did a small limited release uh, of a rum that they called um, treacle and I didn't get to taste it I'm gutted I've just had a smell of an empty bottle that they that they had in a cupboard but they haven't got any it just sold out so it's really popular so I've no doubt they're gonna be hugely successful with their rum I can't wait to get behind them and to taste it and to learn more about how they make that rum we'll have to come back and do another trip uh, when they get the rum production up and going awesome tour awesome part of the world thanks for watching i hope this was insightful i hope you got to learn a bit more about the cotswolds distillery i'm gonna close my eyes now it's so bright <laughs> and uh, i'm gonna enjoy just being down in the cotswolds thanks for watching and uh, see you next week bye bye so i've just asked sean and chris if they've got anything insightful they want to add sean i hope you enjoyed my blast from the past chris I've, I've been thoroughly entertained I've learned, learned a lot about Sean and uh, I feel like we're all growing much closer as a as, as friends and colleagues <laughs> love it <laughs>